Properties, data types and property editors are three key terms in Obraco, which are easily confused with each other. It's very important to understand the difference between the three, which is exactly what I'll help you with in this video. We'll also take a closer look at how we define content in Obraco. Here's what's on the menu for this video. Most importantly, we'll be covering the differences between properties, data types, and property editors. We'll also talk about how to use and customize editors. So as I've already mentioned, it's important to learn the difference between these three terms in Obraco. their are properties, data types, and property editors. Let's start with properties. Simply put, they are a place to store content that can be referred to and can be outputted on the front end of a website. To visualize a property, let's go back to our analogy example with the employee. A property could be one of the fields here in the top, like name, photo, biography, etc. Giving the property a name that's easy to understand is very important as it helps your content editors to know what kind of info needs to be added to the property. So be descriptive. Let's move on to data types. A data type defines what type of information you're allowed to put into a property. The data type you choose determines the type of control your content editors will be using. It's important to configure the most relevant data type to make it as straightforward as possible for your content editors. The final thing to note, data types are configured property editors. We'll be covering property editors in a moment, but know that we make data types by configuring property editors. With that in mind, let's define what a property editor is. The simplest way to define it is the code and logic behind a data type. It's the display shown in the back office. Finally, it's the ability to customize certain parts of a data type. If you want to know more about custom property editors, we have an entire chapter on defining, creating, and working with them. I know that distinguishing between these three terms can be a bit confusing. Let's take a look at an example. For that, we'll use our homepage document type here in the settings section. We will add a new property to our content group. This one will be called promo text. Next up, we'll click add editor. In the dialog here, we have a few options. We can filter to find a specific editor. We can create a new data type based on the available editors, or we can reuse an already created data type. It's important to know the difference between the two tabs, and it will help us understand the difference between a data type and a property editor. The Create New tab lists the available property editors that we can configure to create a new data type. The Use Existing tab gives us the option to choose a data type that has already been configured. You might notice that even though we've only configured one property editor for our body text property over here, there are still a number of data types that we can reuse. These data types are default to every Umbraco installation, and they are also based on a configured property editor. If we scroll down here, you can find the home page rich text editor data type that we made. It's now listed here and can be reused for future properties. Next to it, you will see the default rich text editor data type. You might be wondering, why do we have two data types based on the same property editor? Every data type can be configured differently, even though it's based on the same property editor. This means that we can set up a data type that is as targeted as possible to make it simpler for our content editors. Let's try to select the default rich text editor data type here and submit. As you can see, we now have two properties on our document type, which are using different data types, even though they're based on the same property editor. To make this even more apparent, let's reconfigure the body text property. This can be done by clicking on the property and then selecting the little cogwheel here to the right. There are specific configuration settings that can be set for this data type. We'll go ahead and deselect all these options, except bold, italics, and underline. Let's also change the height dimension to 100. Great. Submit. And submit and save. Now let's go back to the content section. You can now see that even though 
both of these properties are referencing the same property editor, there is a clear difference in the two data types. So let's dive a little deeper. Heading back to the settings section, you'll see that there's a folder here called data types. If we try to expand that, we get a list of all the data types that are also listed in the reuse tab when selecting an editor in the content section. You can configure and create data types in this section as well. So let's, for example, choose our homepage body text rich text editor data type here. We can update the configuration for the data type we're already using. We can also create a new data type from here. If you right click the folder and click create, we'll create a new data type. We'll need to give the new data type a name and we also need to select a property editor. The property editors we can find in this drop down list are the same ones as the ones we found on the create a new tab when selecting editors in the content section. The idea is that you can create data types in the settings section or directly in the workflow when you create your document types. How you do it is completely up to you. Some property editors like the rich text editors have numerous configuration settings. Others, such as the label, has no configuration options except the value type. This also means that you might end up creating multiple data types based on the rich text editor property editor, but reuse the same label data type since the configuration will most likely not change. The final point I want to make, in some cases, property editors need to be configured with something called pre-values before they're useful. Let's go back to our homepage document type and add a new property. We'll start by adding a new group called lists and we'll add a new property here. We will call it title and then we will select the existing drop-down data type from here. Submit and save. And let's head back to the content section to find our front page. If you scroll down, we'll find our new group here and our new property. However, we are presented with an empty dropdown. In this case, our new data type needs to be configured before it's actually useful. For all the list property editors, such as checkbox list, dropdown, and radio button list, they all use something called pre-values. This is a good indication you will make more than one data type based on these property editors because they require customization to be suitable. A lot of information was covered here, so let's do a quick review. We started by covering the difference between properties, data types, and property editors. Properties are defined as a place to store content. Data types defines what type of info you can put into a property. Property editors are the logic, code, and display behind the data types. We went through how to create and reuse data types. We learned that multiple data types can be based on the same property editor, but their configuration makes them unique. Finally, some editors need to be configured before they're useful, more specifically, the list type property editors. In the next video, we'll cover how to customize your document type and properties further. See you there.